Matt Jones, I need you. I bought your bike. My style sucks. Help. Please help. We about to talk some real shit right here. The reason being is, is I have not been bought by anybody. They didn't give me the bike. I don't work for a bike magazine. I bought this thing. I can say whatever I want about it. Some real shit. Bike review time. We are here at the new Sweetwater Bike Park in Benita, California and I am showing you the new Marin Alcatraz. This thing is sick. Bike review time. Bike review time. So as stated, this is the Marin Alcatraz, and to be 100% honest with you, I'm not uh, all that familiar with uh, Marin's products. I've been aware of them being like a heritage, you know, OG company that's been around forever, but never owned one of their bikes, never really looked into any of their bikes before, but um, the pink paint job caught my eye. Um, they got, you know, so they work with Matt Jones to design the bike and, um, I was in the market for a dirt jumper and the price is right. So I ended up with the Alcatraz. Now, um, you know, as far as buying a complete dirt jumper, the build out on the bike isn't much to talk about. I mean, it's got Marin cranks, the X-Fusion fork. Uh, again, I'm new to that company. I've never owned any of their stuff, but, uh, it seems to work really well. Uh, Marin wheels, Marin hubs, Tektro brakes, you know, there's, there's not any one thing that stands out as being like exceptionally good, but for the price point, all this stuff works. So, um, just walking through it real quick, like I said, it has the, the Tektro brakes and those are incredibly cheap brakes. And I mean, looking at, at quality of things and stuff like that, you know, they, they, they look like they're worth what they're, they're sold for, but um they work really freaking good got the 160 millimeter rotor up front which is interesting for a dirt jumper to have two brakes anyways and uh to be honest i kind of like that and for as cheap as they are they work really good so i have no complaints with that um i, I saw some online for a set for like 35 dollars on amazon that's the whole brake system for 35 bucks so uh that's a pretty damn good deal um the X-Fusion fork, again, it's a 100 millimeter fork. I've, I'm not really familiar with the X-Fusion product whatsoever, but you have a compression setting and rebound setting and air pressure. So it's all of what you need in a fork and it works really well um, for dirt jumping and riding the park and the skate park and all the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, I'm up to about 120 PSI uh, middle setting on the clicks out and rebounds. So I think there's like 30 something. I'm at like 17. I'm like middle plus two or something like that on the rebound settings. And then pretty much fully locked out on the compression. And I still have a little bit of compliance. Like if I screw up and pack something up, it, it still works and absorbs that stuff fairly well. Um, tapered headset, uh, you know, is it stronger? I, I don't know. I think if you're gonna have an issue with your, or I'm sorry, tapered head tube, if you're gonna have an issue with something like that, if, if it's a good frame, it's a good frame, it's gonna hold up tapered or not. Um, if you're gonna snap one, you're probably doing something crazy and it's gonna snap anyways, it doesn't really matter. So um, I just like that because I ride mountain bikes and everything I have has a tapered head tube. So I'm just keeping everything consistent for swapping parts sake in my garage and whatnot. Um, I did put on spank bars because I want the same bend that I'm running on my Enduro just to keep a consistent feel between the two bikes. Uh, the bars that came on it, the Marin bars were fine. The bend was good. Um, they said like they, they came with 780s, but the ones I got were probably 740. They're, they're much narrower. I'm at like 780 on these, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, yeah, working down the bike, we got the Marin cranks. So that's like a mountain bike style crank. And I guess there's a bit of debate on what's better for a dirt jumper between uh, BMX style or mountain bike style cranks. Again, my personal opinion on that is if you're going to snap something, I think at the point at which stuff is being snapped, it doesn't matter if it's BMX or mountains. So then you got to start 
going into other factors like price. Um, it seems like BMX you might be able to get away for a little bit cheaper, but there's a surplus of cheap mountain bike stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Th those aren't things I really cared about too much, to be honest. Like, uh, there's good stuff on both. Um, that's just what this bike came with. Um, did come with a half link chain, which is great. Um, the seat, the seat's a little funny. Like you gotta go through the seat. That's how you like adjust the pivot of it. It's kind of weird. So um, yeah, like I said, nothing, nothing really to talk too much about the buildup. The, the wheels, uh, I guess that might've been the biggest disappointment on this whole bike is the, the wheels. Uh, when I got them, it already had like a little bit of a, a bend in the front, like a little wobble. And they were in, like unconsistently tight. Uh, half of it was tight, the other half was loose. Like not brake side to non brake side either. I'm talking like top to bottom. So I had to go through and tighten everything up right from the get go. And like during the first ride, everything was like the spokes were creaking. And uh, I've had to re tighten them now just about every ride. I think this is like the third ride on the bike and I haven't had to do anything yet. And they do feel good. They feel very stiff. It just, uh, they came like a drunk elf assembled them. I mean, it is like the first of the year, so that could have been the case. Um, but whatever, I mean, I'm, uh, that's a minor complaint. Um, yeah, chain tensors too, like, I don't know, the bike came pretty hooked up. Now, the, the big differences that I noticed in this frame compared to other dirt jumpers that I was looking at, because I, I kind of had like three in mine, and two of the three were very similar in frame specs, and this one is a little bit different. I gotta get my notes out because I got this stuff written down. Uh, first thing that was different on this is the stack. So on Marin, you got 575.5, and that was like a quarter inch difference, six millimeter difference higher than two other bikes that I were, I were looking at. The other ones were within about a millimeter of the two. So when you're, when you're doing that, if you think about like that being six millimeters higher, that's about a spacer for, you know, under your stem. The, the small spacer is about five millimeters right there. So it's already one space or higher. Um, so if you like a really low bike, um, you could have a bit of an issue with that because you're already five millimeters higher than other people's bikes. Um, if you see other guys riding like high risers and more spacers on the stem anyways, that's gonna be a little bit more applicable to that. So again, if you don't know what stack is, stack is going from here if you draw a line directly up and then angle it to the top of the head tube. So that's your stack, just like that. So the stack was uh, six millimeters higher than the other two that I was looking at. Um, the other number that kind of stood out to me was wheelbase. Um, it had about a 1.3 inch shorter wheelbase than the other two bikes that I was looking at. So um, the wheelbase, like I said, being 1.3 inches shorter, stack being a little bit higher, the head tube length also being right in between the two. So a similar head tube length, similar chain stays length. It kind of like has pitched the bike up and made it compact. And that was the one unique thing that I noticed about riding it is it's, it's very, it's not twitchy, but it, it's twitchy. Yeah, it is twitchy. Okay. That's, that's the best way to describe it. It's, it's, it's a little bit twitchy. Like with that short wheelbase, you can really get around things quickly. And if you're not ready for it, it's going to surprise the hell out of you. But in getting on the pump track, I'm getting more and more used to that, and I've started to really, really like it. Um, it feels like if you don't touch your brakes going into some bulled out corners, you're really hauling ass going through it. So that's really sick. And um, yeah, so largely I'm really happy with the bike, still getting to know it. But um, if you're looking to get a bike, like I said, it's, it's a great price. I see them out there on the, on the interwebs for like $12.50, $13.50, I think advertised on the website. So, you know, some of the bikes I was looking at were down to 900 to 1,000. And, you know, getting up there with some other ones I was looking at was 13, 14, 1500 bucks. So it's kind of like that mid range, I guess I'd say. And for a mid range complete build on a dirt jumper, that's pretty damn good. That was at the coffee shop this morning. I kind of added up loosely what it would have been to build it with this stuff because I definitely wouldn't have built a bike with Tektro brakes or these wheels. But, it came with and there were something so i kind of like added everything up and like i couldn't find actually how much this fork costs online it doesn't seem like they sell it separately i, I don't know what the deal is with that but uh based on how it's spec'd out and other forks on the website i'm gonna give it a, an, an assumed value of 400 dollars. the frame you can buy for 400 bucks i know that definitively brakes i'm saying 75 bucks i know i saw those ones for 35 but i think they were used so that doesn't count Cranks, 100 bucks, rim set. They're, for sick ones, you're gonna spend 400 bucks. These definitely aren't a $400 rim set, but I'm just saying that's 
for some sick ones, you can spend 400 bucks. So I put that down for 400. Seat, bars, grips, stem, tires, etc. I put that down for another $200 of associated parts. That comes out to 570, or I'm sorry, $1,575. So at $1,250 for everything you're getting, I think the value's there. And again, while it's not all the stuff that I would have bought, I think it's gonna all last long enough to where it's worth it. If you wanna buy a complete bike and get out there and start riding, it's there, it's done, go do it. I'm just gonna wait to break stuff and then replace it as I break it. So that's the game plan and uh, yeah, stoked with it. So uh, yeah, just kind of riding. I'm gonna show you clips of the bike going over shit because it's, it's sick. Almost forgot, if you watch this video, thank you very much. This is a bit of a passion project for me and uh, any of you guys' support is uh, very welcome and, and I'm very grateful for that. So uh, leave a comment, give a like, share this video, all that other good stuff, really appreciate it. If you're wondering, the Matt, Matt Jones Shrine is still going strong. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that up. I don't know, it seems to round out my room pretty nicely. But again, thank you very much and visit my blog, robrides.com. I got more cool stuff up there and photos and all that other stuff. But again, thank you.